Um, no. Well, I'm having a pie and this one has some spinach and I also believe some broccoli in here. Broccoli. We need brains, Eddie. Or chocolate. And that's why chocolate, by the way. No, we need food. We need food. We need phenethylamin. Well, not today, right? Maybe tomorrow, but not today. And you told us we could eat the bad guys. Do, do you see any bad guys right here? You have to understand, there are some ground rules, as I told you, right? I mean, it's a civilized world around here. You cannot just eat about every, anybody that comes into your mind. There are some rules we have to follow. And if you do that, well, this is going to be nice for you because... recognize the car? It will give me a lot of time to see. Let's recreate the visual effects from Venom 1 and Venom 2. We will talk about the Venom rig, tentacles between objects and on objects. Now you see this thing quite a lot in the Venom movies and it's actually pretty easy to do. The only problem is the head which is just a massive pain to animate so we won't have it. As you see it is basically just a three empties that control a curve and on this curve we create with some procedural magic a Venom rig and this looks pretty bad right now because this actually is in a low performance mode and then if you like enable the high performance node mode which means remeshing basically we can get something that looks pretty much like a Venom. So let's recreate this it's actually pretty easy. So you see here I have I added a little Bezier curve like the normal Bezier curve you see every day if you use Blender every day. Basically we need a straight line of a curve with the origin point being down here, right? So I'm gonna also extrude this two around um, here, and the curve is ready. But we need the geometry nodes editor here, and we add a new one, and we disconnect those, and we take the base curve, and we put this here. And uh, as you see, probably like the first problem is it's uh, like inverted, or like not inverted, it's rotated. So let's apply the rotation of the base curve, and let's also pin this little thing up here so that it's pinned. So we can select, uh, for example, this curve here and move this and you see our uh, geometry nodes curve is also moving, which is very nice. So now we need a lot of those curves, right? And this is rather easy to do. We just need a base object to instance those curves onto. In our case, this is the grid. And on this grid, we are going to distribute some points, right? And then instance uh, on this point, the same curve. And look at that, we have a lot of those. You're probably starting to see a similarity with our Venom. All of those curves move at the same time. Now it's just a question of adding some noise. And how do we add some noise? Well, we need a set position node to set the position of those uh, points that make up this curve a different. So uh, we need the noise texture also. And now when we plug this noise texture into this uh, position here, or the offset actually, then what we see is a massive problem where the, they are just moving around. The reason being that these are instances and not a real geometry because it says instance on points, right? So instead what we need is a realize instances afterwards. And now you see we start to have something better. I mean, they are moving, but they're not, I mean, whatever we do with the scale, it's always staying the same thing. It's not becoming like something like that. So. For that what we need is to add some more details. So let's add a resample curve. So we're going to resample this which means adding more detail uh, either by a count. So this means for example I need 600 and for example 666 points per one curve. Uh, we don't want this number or this count. We want length. So just by for example 0. Point something by 3. And now we also make, need to make sure that it doesn't shift so right now it jumps up, which is the reason because of a noise texture and the noise texture, as we know, has values between zero and one. So on average, it moves 0 0.5 up on all the axes. But we are just going to subtract uh, minus 0 0.5, subtracting 0 0.5 or adding minus 0 0.5, doesn't matter. Either one of those. And this is now in the same place. Now, the next thing that we need is to make sure that the head here is actually contracted into a little small blob, as you see here. I mean, right now it's not very hard. We just need a vector of 0 and 0 and probably mm, 4 being the location where they go, right? Because it's 0 and 0 and 0 on all these x and y's. 
and uh, the four on the z-axis. For example, when we move this thing around, uh, you know, the location always shifts. So what we need is actually the position of this thing here, right? For that, we need to separate the geometry like that. Take this geometry from here. Now this is just our um, curve, uh, the exact same as thing as always. And now we need to only uh, select the upper part. So for that, we need to use the endpoint selection. And we're going to select start size one. And you can see what it means. For example, if I instance something on this thing, for example, an icosphere, uh, then you can see what I mean by that. Right, there is something in top here. So on the top here. So we basically have just separated this uh, first point of this curve. There is one, two, three. If I add two of those, we get two, three, three. And from the second end also. So this is how it works. I'm going to delete this one. And uh, we just need the position of this point to be the position of this whole thing here. So we do that with the set position. So how do we get the position of this point here? Well, as you know, we have a position node and we can connect this here, but it doesn't work because currently this position node is just taking the position of the exact same thing here, all of that. So if you use the same position on the object that it already has, then it, the result is going to be the exact same thing. So we need to transfer the position from this separated geometry here. So let's use a transfer attribute. And from this selection, let's uh, transfer the position, which is a vector attribute from here and the attribute goes into the position. Now everything has disappeared because they are all all like up here in this very tiny, I believe infinitesimal is a mathematical way of saying something like the tiniest of all things. Uh, but we, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove you, prove you that this is up there. So if I'm going to mix between the original position, the original position and the point position, then they're moving um, yeah, there is a problem. There is a little, uh, the source geometry must contain a mesh because it's nearest face interpolated. But as you saw, this is not a face. This is a little point. So nearest works as well. And the source geometry must contain a mesh or a point cloud. Well, if you want. So it is a curve. So let's make a curve to a mesh and put it here. And now this moves up here, right? This, uh, this is how the nodes look. If you need some help, and let's go on. Now this is moving up there and we actually want to control this so that only the top part moves there and the part down here doesn't move there. So for that we need a curve parameter. Uh, sorry, I mean the old uh, old lore of geometry nodes. Actually this is called a spline parameter now. So a spline parameter is the factor as the factor and well, things are working, right? Because the factor has the factor of the value of uh, zero up here and one up here and as you see zero is the first input and one is the second input all right so this is why it works so well um and this is all nice and stuff but i just want to use a color ramp to just you know tame this thing a little bit more yeah something like that so i'm moving the upper part only the upper part together and i'm also gonna make this thing a little bit smaller and adding some more points right now this thing is ready the next thing is to make them look like a mesh you know make them look nice so we need to make them curve to mesh like that and we need a curve circle as the profile like that looks ugly we don't need as much resolution i think like eight is fine and also we need a set curve so set curve radius and this is allowing us to set the radius based on a value right now i want this to be like uh, thinner in the center and thicker in the edges or the tail ends so for that i need a spline parameter and i also need a i'm going to show you what it does so factor to the radius and you see it is too much or not the effect that we want we would like this place here to be here we could do some crazy maths but you know, why do we need to do this? We just do this manually with a float curve. And we do like that. And we do like that. Very elegant, I have to say. Now the question is, I would like to, and I think you would like to, you would like, you would like to do this too. <laughs> I'm having some bad English day today. But anyways, you would like to get some random values. 
for each tentacle. So some of those tentacles are actually thinner than the other ones. So how do you do this? Well, you think, okay, let's go like full on, let's take a random value and let's multiply our radius with this random number. And this is not a good idea because the random number is for each point currently. But we can control this by this ID socket here. And you probably, I mean, I always thought like, what is the reason of this ID socket here? What can we do with it? Well, you can see right now. So this ID here is referring to the element and per this element, we are going to have a random value. So for example, if you have such a node called island, mesh island, we have an island index here. And mesh island, basically, if you have like um, the Susan monkey is a very nice example. You think it's one mesh, right? Well, it's not. So for example, the eye here is a, me is a mesh island. It is separate from the whole mesh. I mean, it's under the same mesh, of course, but it's separate, it's not connected to it. Basically, all our tentacles are separate islands, right? If you want to have a separate index per island, we can just take this island index and put it here. Now, this doesn't do any single thing because this is actually not a mesh, this is a curve, right? As you see, this, we use some curve nodes here, we, and we also have a base curve. So this needs to be converted to a mesh. But we cannot convert it to mesh because this curve radius here, curve to mesh, then the curve radius just doesn't work anymore. So what we can do is we can just uh, split this thing here and then transfer the island index from this mesh because, I mean, these are essentially the same things uh, you can see that I'm switching between the mesh and the curve. These are exactly the same things, just a different data type. So I'm going to transfer the mesh island attribute from this mesh, the island index attribute, and I'm going to put this attribute into the ID. And this says, oh, you know, you need faces here. Well, let's use just the nearest. And now you see we have random values per one tentacle. It's all changing at the same time. And this is done, except there are two things. One of those is remeshing this thing. Do you see this looks kind of like bueno? But the noise is problematic here right now. So I'm going to disable this. Problem is, okay, the noise scale is maybe a bit too big, you know, we can do something like that. But when I move this up, okay, it's working nicely, right? When I move this on the sides, it starts to do some, you know, it starts to move, it starts to dance a little bit too much. And I don't like this, that it's moving like that. I'm going to use some custom coordinates for the noise texture. Right now, this noise is evaluated in the world space, which means if I move this around in the world, which is happening right now, imagine like a large noise plate in the world. And right now we're using this. I'm going to use the index of this curve as the custom noise uh, coordinate system. I'm going to show you how it works like that pretty bad uh, i'm gonna just use a math note here to divide this thing make it a little bit less aggressive you know so when i now move this thing for about for example up it is even worse so instead what i would like to do it because the indices are just a number per one uh, vertex of this thing i want to map this right so i want to use a map range and i want to map this to always the same range it always has to be the same range because currently, if you're using this resample curve, right, it's creating like different amounts of indices. I'm going to get the viewer node here. I'm going to preview the index. So we have 1,876 of those. And now if you move this, for example, up, we have, you see this number is increasing because it's getting longer. So it has more indices and this is driving the noise crazy. So what we're going to do is that we are going to use um, map between the zero, which is the first index, as you see here, and then the maximum value of this thing, which is 1875 right now. And to get this maximum value, we need an attribute statistic node. I'm going to close down this thing here, attribute statistic, and we connect the index to the attribute from which we want to get some statistics. And we evaluate this attribute on the resampled curve, uh, like that. And we take the maximum value and plug this into the map range. Except, I mean, the range here is a bit too bad. So let's use like number 40 here. And now watch the magic happening. When I move this, it's always mapped. So it is stretching, like a lot more organic, right? It is, it is not, the noise is not moving anymore. I mean, I was really happy when I figured this thing out. 
I finally felt like I'm actually knowing something about geometry nodes. And now it's just about remeshing this whole thing with a remesh modifier. This doesn't look maybe too good. Enable smooth, smooth shading and use a remesh modifier after that with a bit smaller of a voxel size, you know. And you see some problems happening down here. And well, that's because um, we haven't turned in fill the caps, right? So if you fill the caps, it's now looking nice and you can move this thing around and be very happy with your freshly created venom. If you want to add materials, you have to add a new geometry nodes set afterwards, add a set material. The material is very easy. I'm not gonna, I mean, these are the nodes. It's just a noise with some bump and it looks nice, right? So now let's talk about recreating the body transformation, how to grow tentacles on anything and between anything. But if you feel like, okay, this was a bit complicated for me, like my head was like kind of on the edge of exploding sometimes, then listen up. I have a course on geometry nodes, a class on geometry nodes for beginners, for like absolute beginners on Skillshare and Skillshare is also sponsoring this video. So this is like the double the benefits, right? In addition to my class, Skillshare has classes on almost any creative topic, character animation in 2D and in 3D from Southern Shotty, for example, he's a really good teacher, graphic design, coding business, basically everything you want to learn, like what, which is creative. I've been participating mostly in film classes, like for example, Marquis Brownlee's uh, YouTube success class, which was a really good class. And I've seen a certain success on YouTube. There are new classes added every week. So there's always something useful. And the good news is you can get all of this for free for one month. So how do you do this? Well, the first 1000 people to use the link or my code bad normals will get the one month free trial of Skillshare. See you there. And now let's talk about those tentacles connecting everything. As you see in this shot right here, I mean, these tentacles are really between anything. I mean, I'm gonna turn off, turn on their low performance mode. And you see, I mean, these are between anything connecting pretty nicely. And you think, okay, I'm gonna break your system, right? I'm gonna move this far away and this looks very crappy. Well, you are not gonna break my system. You're gonna increase the spread factor and guess what? It's gonna look pretty nice again. So you're probably asking, how did I create this shot actually, like before we create those tentacles? And this actually is the original version of the shot. I made a clean plate version of it, right? So this is one with me, one without me. I used the CG double of myself and blend it between the clean plate and the real footage. So that when I like flew a against the wall, I was CG and uh, became switched to it at a certain point. And that's the whole story. It's not anything complicated, actually. So let's talk a bit about these tentacles here. So this is done in a way that we have a from object and a to object. Now the from object is uh, this cube here and the to object is the monkey here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to instance or I'm going to distribute some points on the from object, right? And I'm going to instance on this from object uh, a mesh line like that, using the rotation of those points as the rotation. And this is good and all, but this should be uh, pointing towards the monkey, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find the direction from from object to to object, just subtract their position like that. And the reason why I'm doing this is let's say this monkey is at the location of zero, 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 which it is. Now the location of this cube is zero on the X axis. Uh, then three on the y axis and then three on the z axis. So if I have to move from the monkey to the cube, how much do I have to move? I have to move by zero on the x axis, which is here. Uh, I have to move three on the y axis and three on the z axis. Now, if I want to move from the cube to the monkey, which is what I want, the things have to move from the cube to the monkey, then I have to move down minus three and minus three so you can understand what i mean so how do i get uh, this these numbers like minus three and minus three here i have to subtract from the two objects i subtract the from object from the two objects i'm subtracting the from object and i'm aligning the rotation of the points to this thing so now when I move this thing around, they are always pointing towards the monkey. Now I'm just randomizing this with an Euler to vector aligning, aligning this to a random value. And then I'm gonna realize the instances, turn them into curves and move tentacle ends near the two object. So this is basically done with the geometry proximity uh, like that, set position and to here. 
So this the modulo here is basically just selecting the endpoints of each each of those like curves because they only have two points. So I mean I'm gonna tell you a bit more in the full tutorial. Uh, now the next thing is that I want to add noise to it, right? But I cannot do this because it has only two points as I just said. So I need to resample this curve uh, by 150. Basically now each of those lines has 150 points. And I'm going to apply noise everywhere. You see, if I apply everywhere, the problem is they jump like away from here. But I'm only doing this so that I'm basically using this float curve. You only apply the noise. It's zero in the end. So if I make this one, it jumps away, but it's zero in the end. So they stay in the exact same place. And uh, the next thing is that I want to turn them into meshes, right? like that and why is there so many actually there was also one which was like restricting them to the faces that were towards the monkey with some dot product basically dot product is finding if two vectors are aligned if they are aligned it outputs one <laughs> now i should know that and if they are like perpendicular it outputs zero and if they are against each other it's minus one i'm basically Finding the uh, dot product between the normal of this cube and the uh, position of this two object here. This is just used as the density of this distribute points on faces, right? If I disconnect this, I'm going to have this everywhere. If I put this here, I'm going to have this only in the faces that are towards the monkey. And the next thing is I wanted to, you know, have the radius be a bit thin, more thin in the center with a spline parameter and a float curve. This multiplication here is giving me a random value per one tentacle. And you're asking, how do I do this? I know that each tentacle has 150 points. How do I know that? Well, I just resample this into 150 points. So if I now divide their IDs with the same number, I get one random value. Now, like before I was getting one random value between one element, which was one vertex. Now I get one random value per one element, which is one tentacle. Right, if I change the seed, you see they are all changing. The next thing is attach closer to two object. So as you see, they are a bit like they are in the air here. So I don't like this. I want to squeeze them a little bit. So I'm going to use the geometry proximity and I'm squeezing them closer here. Uh, with this, uh, with the proximity of this two object. The same thing to, for the from object. I mean, I have some strange things here. Things are, they are having like some independent thinking here. I'm going to suppress them with geometry proximity, as you see, like that. And this looks extremely ugly. I'm just going to remesh it, right? Like that, uh, four centimeters and then with one centimeter. This looks pretty nice. And actually, you know what, what would, could be even more nice? If you would use a smooth modifier here, the ratio of two and repetitions of five are like that. This is more smooth now. And this is how the tentacles are made. Full tutorial on Patreon. Now, before we get into body transformation, maybe you would like to know how to propagate Venom tentacles on any surface. Now, there have been some tutorials on YouTube using the IV generator, and the result is okay. But I mean, if you're going full Blender, let's go full Blender, right? And the problem is we cannot because we need the Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra was a Dutch computer scientist who found a way to find the shortest path between elements. So we need the same thing here to basically find the shortest path to all of the locations of the monkey. Geometry nodes don't have a shortest path uh, node yet. Houdini has and also animation nodes have. So with animation nodes, for example, you can take like an icosphere and uh, then uh, I'm going to show you how it works. You go to animation nodes. So we're going to add a mesh object input and also a mesh object output and connect them like that. And also then find shortest path. Then select this object here, the icosphere as the source object, create a target object and use this target object. It's a very weird system. Now, if you want to find the shortest path from this to all of the other vertices here, then I need to know the index number of this point, right? How do you know this? Well, I go up here and I enable indices. It is 37 and you probably don't have this option. So you have to go to interface, enable developer extras. We type in here number 37 like that. Select the target object here and press tab and go back and hide the icosphere. We are in the edit mode and you see here, there is a shortest path found to each of those uh, 
vertices, right? It looks pretty cool. So if you use, for example, a geometry node 3 on this object now, then we can do all sorts of cool stuff. For example, we can take like a curved circle, use this as the radius of this thing, and also decrease this a little bit, you know, clamp this thing, and we can basically have a growing animation. So something like that, as you see here, is basically giving you the Venom uh, effect. And uh, I used the same thing on my body during the transformation. And you're asking, how was the body transformation made? Well, this is something that should not be made in Blender. <laughs> so the base layer is just a photo scanned me. I had a friend take many photos of me, head and body separate, and then I put those into meta shape, which gave me the meshes. I cleaned those up with instant meshes, and the same friend who took photos of me was kind enough to bake textures using Substance Painter. Of course, Blender has a texture baking option, but I mean, if it takes two days, it's not a feature, it's kind of a punishment. So use Substance. Now I created the shortest path wire version for tentacles, and I rigged the character and the shortest path wire with identical weight groups. So when I move, the tentacles move with me, right? So I used the proximity of the tentacles to drive the Venom material propagating on my body using the geometry proximity distance node. And now at some point I started morphing from my shape to Venom's shape. I have a tutorial on that on Patreon, like the morphing stuff. But basically it works so that you have a morph from and morph to object. And then you use the geometry proximity node uh, to get the shape of the morph to object and mix between the original position and the proximity position. Now I was crazy enough to do this in two ways. So I morphed like from myself to Venom and also from Venom to myself. So I had like a smooth mix from one to another. If there were any mistakes, it was all hidden with the uh, black material taking over the yellow jacket. And the thing you see on the hands here is just the good old tentacle system we just went over. And this kind of wraps up the Venom thing. It got delayed like crazy because I ate some rotten buckwheat. I was in a hospital for some long time. Big thanks to my patrons who paid my uh, hospital bill, by the way. Now that Venom is done, I'm gonna work on Doctor Strange. The second movie is coming out in like I think it's May the 6th or something like that. It has view potential, right? I have to be quick. <laughs> I hope I will get this ready. And uh, yeah, see you then.